lumber mill. All right, what do I know? I've already built a couple lumber mills, but I still want to go through the design from the ground up. Just in case I come up with some cool ideas I would otherwise miss. All right, if I'm looking down the end of the lumber mill, I want a blade like this, like a circular blade. That's from the top. <clears throat> you know. And I want to do this kind of blade rather than a bandsaw because the bandsaw, you have to keep sharpening it all the time. And if it's not sharpened really well, and, you know, it starts wiggling up and down through the wood. But this, these you can get with carbide teeth. It's also a lot easier to get a circular saw blade. I can just go to the store and buy a 12 inch circular saw blade if I need to. So I want to make this work with a 12 inch circular saw blade. And I want to be able to cut down the log like this and have a pivot point here so the blade can swing up with the corners overlapping so that I can come back on the log and cut the vertical. So I can cut a horizontal down that way and then swing it and cut the vertical. And that, that way I can just cut boards out of the log moving the saw part around without moving the log. So I want to have some blade shaft that's long enough that I can cut wood like, you know, in here. And then some kind of motor gearbox something here that'll spin that around. And then the pivot point is here. That'll attach to some kind of thing. that will let this slide back and forth and lock it in place that way or that way. And then this will be attached to some kind of thing that has wheels down at the bottom and can roll along a track. All right, that's, that's the basic idea. Let me just do some thinking. Okay, and this whole part go up and down measured distances and the wheels down here roll on the track so this is this is basically exactly what I built before now I am in a saltwater environment that means I want to minimize the use of regular steel so stainless steel or aluminum aluminum hmm. I do have lots of stainless steel bolts and some stainless scrap I have a bunch of wheels. I got a whole bunch of these shopping cart wheels a little while ago from a surplus place. So those could be the wheels at the bottom here. Hey, where's my cover on this side? Must be in the box. I also have a few motor options. Yeah, 24 volt DC. Wow, I think that's like a one horsepower. It'd be a little bit low power. And this guy over here is much higher power. I don't, the voltage is higher. It's 48 or 72 volts. I can't remember now, but I, I do remember this is a lot stronger motor. Oh, let me see. Where's the label? All right, this has the serial number and the... Oh, it's not... Oh, There's no label in this damn thing. Okay. I guess I'll have to look it up by the part number or something. Oh, we got big here. That's not big enough. That's a quarter horsepower. It's a nice looking motor. No, it's 400 to 350 watts. Half horsepower. Anyway, not big enough. Um, you know, this motor here is the exact same size as the one in my bulldozer. And the one in my bulldozer is significantly higher powered. Not a ton higher powered, but more than that. So I could swap those out because I never run the bulldozer at full power anyway. Not that I've used it in the last couple of years. Oh, I gotta go get that thing and bring it over here. 
Okay. I've got the saw blades. It's 12 inch. How many teeth on it? I don't remember. 24 or something. Uh, I, I bought two of these just on Amazon. And I also have this thing here, which I could use to build the the blade holder and, you know, have the motor connect to back here somehow, use those two bearings. The only thing is none of this stuff is stainless. It also has a big motor down there, but it's a, an AC motor. I think I'd rather go with DC, so I'm not relying on an inverter. Oh, 40 teeth. Yeah. There's probably more teeth than I want, but whatever. This is good enough to start with. Hmm. All right. I want something that's going to make a blade go... Wait. And then... And then... I think I have something I can use to make this part here. Here, these things. I got three of them. And they're pretty long. Mm, almost as tall as me. And what's that? Six inches. Everything's in imperial noodle units, of course. It's like six by two. And it looks like it has pretty good edges. So if I run bearings on there, it should run straight up and down. Speaking of bearings, I just got some like skate bearings. I just bought a hundred of them. These little guys. I figure I can use them to make rollers for you know parts that have to slide. Although I don't want to, I don't want steel running right against aluminum, aluminum. Because the steel's a lot harder and will start making grooves. Could wear right through. So maybe I'll make little wheels for the bearings out of. Uh, oh, yeah. Out of this. It's. Uh, what is this stuff called? Oh, I don't know. It's some kind of. <laughs> it says Acetron. I don't know, it's some kind of pretty durable plastic. So I could cut circles out of there, lay them to fit the bearings perfectly, and maybe put a bearing, one on each side. And then the plastic will have a little bit of give, so it won't dig into the metal. Heck, I could just use a bunch of these. That <laughs> would be kind of huge though for something that's just gonna slide a little bit up and down. So where I'm talking about is little rollers right here so this whole thing can slide up and down although these rollers aren't that important because they just come into play when I'm adjusting this when I want to lock it in place you know I might even want the rollers to get out of the way like have some kind of thing that locks it so it's just metal on metal stuck so maybe, I don't know maybe I don't even need rollers because this this isn't like flying up and down all the time it's just moving like you know, little bits at a time between cuts. Okay, in all reality, this is this is probably what I'm going to end up building. So let's just draw it in. Something kind of good to attach around there. So it's kind of good. Kind of like the reinforcements, but this part here has to be able to slide, so it's on a thing. Whatever. And then. Okay, and then wheels. I can't connect this across here because I would get in the way of the log. The log goes like here. <clears throat> and this will have some kind of let's see, track at the bottom. Like, you know, these will go like long. And then this whole thing can roll along that on some kind of wheels. 
I have to have little brushes to brush off the sawdust bit that gets on bits that get on there. Mm, okay, up here, these connections are gonna have to be really good to keep the thing stable. So uh, I'll have to see how much clearance I have here, and then put you know, some kind of decent piece stuff like that and bolt it in or whatever, rivet it, I don't know, really good. And I think I have something I can use for those. It'd be nice to use bolts because then I can get the thing apart if I want to. Here we go. Eighth inch diamond plate, aluminium, aluminum, same material as the other piece, so they can go next to each other. I've also got a sheet of the exact same thing right here I'm using as a shelf. So that's a pretty decent sized piece. I could take that if I need it. These will need to be stainless because they're going to be sitting in the ground and I'm in a salt water environment. Hopefully I can get some stainless steel pipes in town and I'll want to connect them across so they keep the, the same width, you know, connect them across in a few places. So, you know, the bottom, the width here at the bottom isn't totally relying on the strength of these up here. So, you know, keep itself lined up. And obviously, this will have wheels on the top and then, oh yeah, this is what I need the little rollers for. Little rollers on the sides to keep it from just, you know, wobbling off the thing. Alright, so the first thing I need to make here is the blade mounted to the shaft with whatever motor, gearing, box, whatever, this whole, the, the cutter part. And then that's going to define some of this other stuff, because once I know how big this is, I know how much, you know, space I need to make around it and stuff like that. Do you think you could make it this big? I could make it as big as I want, but that is too small. Because that would much dust. Alright, I'm just going to let the whole design kind of percolate in my head for a bit, not get stuck on what I've drawn here. And I'm just going to think, what do I what do I need to make a blade go like that and then like that? Maybe I should go even more basic than that. I need to cut logs into boards. What's the most, what's the best way I can do that? I don't just want to do it with a chainsaw, partly because I have a gas chainsaw and partly because you lose a lot of material when you cut with the chainsaw because it cuts a big, big fat line. And, uh, I can, you know, hey, I, I don't want to do a chainsaw. I want to, I want to do a lumber mill that's going to cut really nice straight boards. All right. Let me just put plug that into my head. I want to cut nice, straight, smooth boards. And it's probably just going to end up being this. Oh, and for uh, reference, all this wood is to make a floor that will go around. Ugh, you know, this, this stuff will go upstairs when I get the floors done. But like a floor that will go around the entire house at the second floor level. And then a solid floor up there where that, you know, where those joists are. I'm going to replace all those. Those are just temporary while I was doing the construction of the roof. But yeah, solid floor all the way across. It's going to be a lot of wood. That's going to be a 40-foot diameter circle floor. I'm also feeling some pressure to get this third floor gymnasium floor done because we have a neighbor who's a gymnastics coach. And she says she will come and teach the kids gymnastics if I have a place to do it. And that's, I mean, it's like mostly done. I just need to put the floor up there. Are you excited to learn some gymnastics? <laughs> you want to do some wrestling! Well, you want to do gymnastics too? Cool. What are you eating there? Cereal? With tons of bananas? 
I, I just got like 250 bananas off a banana tree recently. I've already eaten like half of them. And a whole bunch Deshana has at her house. But man, we got bananas coming out of our ears right now. Which is exciting because growing bananas has always been one of my goals for some reason. I always thought, you know, I want to live off grid and I want to grow bananas. Although when I thought that was going to be a big difficult thing, I thought I'd be living in a cold climate and I'd have to make a greenhouse to do it. Here they just grow. Okay, let's get this video saved. Wow, what is that? 